Hey guys, Parker Curtis here in the Homegrown Garden. Welcome to our first episode with an IPM specialist, Matt Gates. But before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe. Three, two, one. As we prepare for another season of growing, there are a few key things to consider. What are some of the common obstacles and organisms that we may encounter? This will depend on the environment, region, and native pests. Take note of things like humidity, temperature, and insects in your area. If you've grown before, it's helpful to be familiar with issues you've had in the past. Being able to spot and identify different types of harmful and beneficial insects is important. Additionally, you should be able to identify common types of mold and fungi that may impact the health of your plants. For instance, in my past grows, I've had to deal with things like caterpillars, leaf miners, powdery mildew, botrytis, and white flies. Instead of dealing with problems as they arise, we can take steps before planting to help mitigate these problems. Another important part is cleaning and sterilizing. We need to gather supplies, equipment, and products used to treat these pests and molds. We also need to plant things to deter pests and attract predatory species, and having a schedule for applying biological controls. Some of the steps I'll be taking this year are treating the surrounding area for pests, making sure as many entry points as possible are closed off. This will help keep things like butterflies, moss, and even grasshoppers out of the greenhouse. Cultivating plants around my greenhouse to attract insects that may predate pests. Creating an SOP and schedule for the different stages of your grow will help you stay ahead of any of these problems. All right, so I got my friend Matt Gates here. It's always great to have you here in the garden. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So uh, yeah, I got a variety of plants around here right now, kind of uh, playing off of what you told us last time. Yeah, I see pea plants and I see squash or pumpkin or something mm -hmm. over there. I see some peppermint, some rosemary and some lavender. So tell me about that. Yeah, so um, last time we talked about things, you know, like uh, predatory species and uh, detrimental species. So even like releasing something like ladybugs, they need food. So you need to have the problem pests present for them to stick around. So True. it's kind of a fine balance, but I'm going for the, the diversity here. You know, I have things like uh, native California wildflowers, the peas, beans, and lupins are gonna help fix nitrogen. The rosemary, mint, and lavender are going to deter certain pests, but a lot of these are going to be blooming, so they're going to bring pollinators and um, like we spotted some parasitic wasps around. So that's true. Yeah, hoping for a nice mix in the garden this year. Well, that's pretty awesome. And some of those insect pests are going to be like not even a problem for cannabis, but they will be a food source for some of those beneficials that will attack the <coughs> cannabis pests. So that's an excellent point. Yeah, and you know, I know sometimes you can plant something as a trap plant which will attract um, attract some of those uh, things that would normally munch on your cannabis but that can become a problem a, a vector of infection so it's nice having these in pots because i can move them out accordingly and kind of create a barrier and an ecosystem in and around the greenhouse but uh, move it away from the cannabis if it becomes a problem yeah, that's a good point about versatility, because yeah. if you do get something that you don't want, but you also have stuff that you do want, you can just separate some of those pots that aren't so good and you can quarantine them, treat them, and then you can reintroduce them. Yeah, like if we have those um, pesky caterpillars coming around, I can have some of those plants that they also like out away from the greenhouse. Maybe they'll lay their eggs on that before they ever hit the cannabis. And so, yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm going to do smaller sets this year instead of having this place packed with cannabis. I'm going to have some of these other plants in and around them and do probably about um, a dozen or two dozen cannabis plants at a time and, you know, see what works well uh, in and around each other. I know I did some reading about marigolds and those, I guess they plant those, the, the cabbage worm is what is eating most of my cannabis plants. So those tend to deter those, uh, those moths and butterflies. So I'm gonna try uh, planting some of those in small pots next to the cannabis. Oh, interesting. I look forward to seeing how that goes. Yeah, I got some here we can plant today. Uh, but you know, just going around the home improvement store, trying to do some research on some plants that will be useful. The, I mean, the rosemary, once those take off, I know those are, uh, I mean, you could even make your own little uh, homemade spray solutions and stuff. I mean, all the oils, the essential oils in that, the mint and the lavender, uh, the bugs that we don't want in here don't like that stuff. 
Yeah, uh, for the most part. And then also you can use some of that for your own cooking, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I got a couple up front um, that doesn't, you know, I, I got plenty of bugs up there, but no cannabis. So I see that you have peppermint over there. Yeah, the peppermint, lavender, the rosemary. Stuff is really nice to have in and around the greenhouse. I have a lot of experience growing peppermint, especially when I was a kid. I used to love growing it because it grows so voraciously and the flowers would attract things like parasitic wasps, small little wasps, big bees and hornets and all kinds of things. They would all come in at once and they'd feed on the flowers. So I definitely felt like you, you could get a lot of really interesting insects this way. And of course, if you get a little bit of aphid or whatever, no problem, the parasitoids will come in and they'll feed on it, which is of course one of the reasons you're trying to grow it here, right? That's the name of the game this season. I want diversity, I want a little ecosystem here. I don't want uh, too many pests or too many predators. I just want just the right balance to keep them off of my pot plants. <laughs> I was gonna check here, but it looks like you don't actually have a particular cultivar of peppermint being described here, at least in that tag. But sometimes you do get interesting little cultivars like that have Chocolate, little... mint, and yeah, stuff. Like yeah, yeah, so. Oh, I see that you have lavender too, right? That's another good one for the garden. And, you know, this is terpene in here, linalool, that's found in a lot of cannabis. So this is one that de uh, deters a lot of pests. It's nice to have in the garden. Uh, they're in pots so I can move them outside and help create that barrier. Yeah, and this one's already flowering, so I would expect you to get a bunch of these nectar feeding parasitoid wasps and other sorts of interesting insects like that coming in and enjoying it. So I look forward to seeing it grow really big and healthy. Yeah, me too. I, I've had trouble growing them in the past. I know they don't like a ton of water. So, mm. um, you know, I may transplant this into something larger and move it outside. But uh, yeah, having this, the peppermint, the rosemary, I'm hoping to uh, have a little palette of things that will attract or, you know, keep certain things away. All right, I'm looking forward to this thing getting bigger. I, uh, I know that you have a guava tree over there and uh, growing up I also had a big guava tree just like that and it got a lot of kinds of pests and things. Do you have an issue with it? Yeah, let's go check it out. Uh, for the last couple seasons I've been battling white flies and... So we're here under the guava tree. This is just outside of the greenhouse and the last couple of years this thing's given me a bit of problems. I've had white flies and mealy bugs and two seasons ago I treated it with Contos, which I got a bit of flack for on YouTube. So since then we're going to be using plant therapy. It's an organic product that you had recommended. Yeah, it's, uh, it's basically a bunch a horticultural oil with mm. a bunch of essential oils added to it, some isopropyl alcohol. So it has a lot of the benefits that you would have for spraying essential oils for various different pests without some of the negative side effects that you would have with a product like you're mentioning. Sure, and it's safe to use on cannabis. And this is kind of coming back to treating the surrounding area. So, you know, we saw this mealy bug. I remember seeing something like that in the greenhouse. So this certainly has to be uh, a source of where some of those bugs are getting into my and onto my plants over there. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely see it. And I remember exactly this conspicuous shape on one of your mm. cannabis plants from before. Yeah, it looks like a little barnacle. So yeah. I guess we'll spray this thing down and try to get this population under control before we actually get plants in the greenhouse, you know, cannabis plants in the greenhouse. In fact, I can actually see over here I can see that we have some white fly or something producing a bunch of wax on this yeah. leaf. So I would not be surprised if there's more active white fly species. Guava love to be a host for these white flies. They're everywhere and it was a lot worse last season. So I guess we'll spray this thing down and see if we can get it under control. All right, so this is the third season that I've been using this greenhouse. And one of the most important things to keep the budworms off of your plants is a physical barrier. So this thing needs a little bit of work. Uh, this actually just happened today. Wow. Yeah, so um, your suggestion was to just kind of tighten up all the entry points and make sure that nothing's able to get in as far as like a butterfly or a moth. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize it, but a lot of, not all, but a lot of insects, they're not gonna try to like push through like some narrow thing that they might be able to squeeze through, especially things like moths, like the budworm moths, right? It's such right. a problem. So a big hole like this, it would let something like that in, but if you're able to just 
mend it, you're fine. Yeah, and even like the, you know, this is just a little gate kit that I build the door out of, but I think they could even get through here. So I was gonna add some blocking around just to make sure any little entry points. I have a the side of the greenhouse here. I have a, a little spot that I always get something through. So I'm going to figure out some way to block that off so they can't crawl into here. Yeah, that's a good idea. And I can see that you still, despite that, you still get a bunch of help from all the spiders and things around here. Yeah, uh, this thing had a couple of egg casings hatched, so I got a whole new generation of those uh, orb weaver spiders, was that it? Yeah, silver agrio or whatever. Mm. One of my favorites, by the way. Yeah, that thing's been, um, this whole, uh, since last season, that I've been feeding that thing, and we got a new generation coming, so that's been very helpful. I'm looking forward to seeing some, some new ones coming. That's nice. Yeah, and uh, so aside from tightening everything up, we have all of the, um, the companion plants. I'm doing some kind of maintenance around the surrounding area to make sure that I mitigate as many problems as I can, and hopefully this will lead to a productive season. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it. To be honest, that's one of the number one things that people can do to keep pests out. It's obvious, but a lot of people discount it or they don't put in the time to, like you say, keep all that maintenance because weird stuff happens on a farm or just somebody's backyard and yeah. you got to keep aware of that. So we covered a lot of different issues today. We talked about treating the surrounding areas, uh, kind of bolstering your physical barrier, the use of companion plants, trap plants, and uh, you know, I, I know there's a bit of confusion with uh, when and where to use these things. So um what's your insight on these and when i should pull them out of the greenhouse well you know they get a lot they're very popular having companion plants and things like that banker plants trap crops you mentioned right. things like that there's a bunch of nuanced ways that you can use plants like this in my opinion the best thing you can do is try to get plants that are not super invasive or if they can be in a way that's controlled that you can right. control that and also always just scout your plants like you scout your cannabis plants if you find bugs that can get onto your cannabis plants well maybe don't have them near them and then control them in some way and then bring them back in yeah just kind of play it by ear scout this thing if there's uh, something that looks like it can be a problem pull it out so if there's a pest that will typically go onto your cannabis, you can move that out away to kind of uh, uh, group those bugs or attract them all just to that plant and then treat that plant. Yeah, and then on the other hand, you'll get, I'm sure, a bunch of aphids and things that will not go on cannabis because there's so many, not all of them attack cannabis, yeah. but they will get parasitized. And we saw a bunch of those in your backyard and other places too, and here. So. Yeah, like the, the milkweed had a bunch of aphids that you said were parasitized and that's a, it's, it's a fine balanced ecosystem. You, you, need, you need the pests there that could potentially damage, but uh, that's what's going to bring those predators to help combat that. That's why they call it integrated pest management, not integrated control or anything like that, because you're really managing the stress of the plant in aggregate. Yeah. yeah, it seems to be a kind of a, a fluid practice that takes a, a bit of nuance and attention. So looking forward to see how these things uh, do for me. I'm going to be moving them all around the garden area. Thanks everybody for watching the first episode in this series. Be sure to join us next time in episode two where we're going to be germinating our seeds.